Well, hello everyone, my name is Swiggle and today I'm bringing you the sequel to my Can You Beat Pokemon Ruby with Only Fossil Pokemon run. Today we're going to find out if we can beat Pokemon Diamond with only Rampardos and Bastiodon. Yes, of course that's possible, but who is going to be the best of the two fossil Pokemon? Is it going to be Rampardos or Bastiodon? We're going to find out right now. Rampardos has an amazing attack stat, but that's about it. The rest of his stats are pretty mediocre. And then Bastiodon has a very good special defense and defense stat. And that's about it as well, actually. Rampardos gets access to some good TMs as well as Bastiodon. My favorite fossil Pokemon is Tyrantrum. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite fossil Pokemon is. And with that being said, let's get right into the gameplay. So we name ourselves Swigo, and our rival's name is going to be something very special this time. It's E. Very original, I know. We start off the game by heading to the lake with our buddy E, where we have our first encounter with Professor Rowan who leaves his briefcase behind. As we enter the grass we get attacked by a few Starlies so we have to pick a Pokemon out of the briefcase and we're going to be picking Shield on because he will be having the hardest time in the start of this run. After beating up the Starly and doing the Professor shenanigans we go straight to the trainer school where we get our town map and then we fight our rival next to the city. While I was in the trainer school I picked up the hidden power TM and I learned it to Shield on. After battling a few times with him, I finally figured out that it was the hidden power for fighting, which is amazing as the first gym. His first Pokemon is a Starly who loves to growl at me, which lowers my attack. So hidden power is special in this game, so we hit him with a few of those and eventually Starly goes down and Piplup is a little bit more annoying. Apparently Shield on special attack is atrocious, so my hidden power really doesn't do that much on Piplup. So after using about 10 of those, he goes down and we win our first rival battle. We then dig a little hole and fall in the mine, we find Rourke, we put him back in his gym where he belongs and we fight him. Because I already fought a few Geodudes in the mines, I know that they don't go down by one hidden power. So I first metal sound it and then hit with a hidden power to take it out in one hit. Next up is Onyx and since rock type moves barely do any damage to my shield on, I managed to get off two metal sounds and two hidden powers to take out the Onyx. Last up is Cranidos and he goes down the same way we took out Onyx, metal sound and two hidden powers. So that means that shield on is technically better than Cranidos. Just kidding. So now that we have acquired our first gym badge, it's time to fight the Team Galactic Commander in the Valley Windworks. But unfortunately, due to some bad, bad RNG, we lose our first attempt. On our second attempt, we're a little bit more lucky to take out the Perugly with a few hidden powers after we hit it with a few metal sounds. And at the end of that, my shield on learned Takedown. After clearing the forest with Cheryl, it's time to fight the second gym leader, which is Grass type Gardenia. And this woman needs to be respected because she took down my shield on about, let's say, 30 times. Every single one of her Pokemon had the ability to take me down somehow. If we got hit with a Leech Seed or if we got hit with a Stun Spore, it would be over. If the third week set of reflect it would be over so after trying and trying and trying i eventually decided to grind up to level 25 which is a little bit over level for this gym so here's my winning strategy first i metal sound the cherubi then i put a swagger on it i accidentally put another one on it then i metal sound it again and one hidden power takes it out with us only taking a hit from one grass knot next up is a third week and i use the same strategy right there i swagger it use a couple of metal sounds eventually hidden power we can take him down as he hits himself in its confusion and we only get hit with one grass knot last up is rose raid and she cannot hit us like she can hit us with a stun spore and that's it swagger she has to hit herself twice and then my takedown has to actually finish her off which is exactly what happened here which meant that it was the perfect scenario we won and we get our second gym badge we then go to the other team galactic hideout across town and beat up jupiter right there with her stinky stinky stunk tank we then rob an old man from his explorer kit and dig some holes in his house and then we find our skull fossil send it back to the bag and put it in the museum with the guy over there and we get ourselves a big head crany dose because he is a big brain boy in mount cornet we meet a blue haired psychopath and we head on with our journey without actually calling the police as we try to leave hard home city we have to fight e once again 
He like always starts off with his Starly and our big head manages to take him down with one takedown. Yeah. Primplup manages to do a lot of damage against our shield on but one metal sound and two ancient powers manage to finish him off. Roselia then comes out. We, we do hit it with one last ancient power before we get taken out with a leech seed and a mega drain. Luckily we still have big head and takedown manages to finish off the Roselia. Next up is Ponita. We hit it with a takedown. We then get hit with a tackle but one last last final attack and we win the battle. We then travel to the top of the ghost tower to get ourselves DHM for strength. While fighting some trainers my shield on evolved into a Bastiodon at level 30. Then I finally hit the gym. Not literally, I never go to the gym actually. But I get stuck on one of the gym trainers. I couldn't even reach the gym leader so I knew that it was time to grind up. So after defeating all the trainers I managed to devolve my Cranidos into a Rampardos which learned Endeavor at level 30. I then got past the trainers rather easily and head straight for the gym leader, Mei Li. But I am not going to lie, this battle was so hard, I could barely even defeat the Machoke. And if I got to the Machoke, the Lucario would just take out the rest of my remaining team members with Force Palm. So yet again, like in the second gym fight, I had to get lucky with Swagger. And so eventually, after another dozen tries, I managed to get the Run of Dreams without actually leveling up anymore. Menadite gets one one shot by a takedown. Macho gets two shot it, but Lucario takes down my Rampardo, so I go into Bastiodon. He manages to connect with a Force Palm, which almost takes me down, and we get paralyzed. But a Swagger hits. He hits himself in its confusion next turn. I use a Metal Sound. He hits himself again, and my final hidden power manages to take down the Lucario, and we get ourselves the third Gym Badge. We then defeat some Team Galactic members to get the HM for Fly and Dawn's Pokedex, and we head straight to the fourth gym led by Crasher Wake, one of the most iconic gym leaders in this game. And actually in all of the games combined, I would say besides Brock maybe and Misty. He starts off with his Gyarados and I start off with my Bastiodon. I metal sand him and hit him with an ancient power but he manages to live on just a few health remaining and he heals up. Me thinking that he will heal up fully, I hit him with another metal sound but he didn't heal up fully so next turn my ancient power manages to get rid of him. Next up is Quaxar, so I switch in my Rampardos to take him down with a few takedowns. Last up is Float Soul, so I switch in Bastiodon, I get off one metal sound, but he hits me with a brine to take me out. I then switch back into Rampardos, I hit him with an Ancient Power, which is special in this game, and Float Soul goes down. We get our fourth gym badge, we talk to a Team Galactic guy who runs off because he has a bomb with him. While running off, E stops us for another battle. God dang it, E, this is not the time I'm chasing a terror right now. He still has a Starly, so my Bastiodon just one-shots it. Next up is Primplop, so my Rampardos is just too strong for it, one Zen Headbutt, and he goes to the grave. Next up is Roselia, so I switch in Bastiodon, I hit it with an Ancient Power, but sadly enough we get hit with a Leech Seed, which means that we have to use two more Ancient Powers to take down the Roselia. Ponyta is last, so I stay in and one Ancient Power finishes the job. After chasing around the stupid Grunt, we go to Celestic Town to deliver the old charm to the woman right there. We also meet Cyrus once again but we don't battle him here because that's only in Platinum. I really didn't know that Platinum is such a complete game and Diamond is just lacking in a few places here and there. And then we fight our French model once again. This time she is not the third gem leader, she is actually the fifth gem leader. Her first Pokemon is a Drifblim who we take down with three assurances because she healed up with a Hyper Potion. Miss Magius is out next and because of our crazy high attack that we hit ourselves in our confusion which does a lot of damage but eventually we do hit an assurance to take out the Magius in one hit. Last up is Sir Gengar who takes down my Rampardos with the Shadow Claw so I switch in Bastiodon. He can't even touch us because of our typing. I managed to get off three metal sounds and one Asian power finishes off the Gengar. With the fifth gym match acquired we can surf to our next destination where we have to fight our rival once again. He now finally has a stir Arabia, so I lead with my Bastiodon and we still one shot it with an ancient power. Next up is Heracross so I switch him big head to take him down with one Zen headbutt. Primplop manages to survive a Zen headbutt this time but an assurance manages to assure that he goes down. Ha. Roselia also goes down to one Zen headbutt and we then level up and learn Screech which we replace for Endeavor. Last up is Ponyta so I stay in, hit it with an ancient power and we get ourselves the W. Next up is actually 
a very hard gym battle once again because we don't have anything to hit his Pokemon with because they are still type. I knew that Bastiodon could learn Flamethrower, but I wanted to defeat this gym without it. Honestly, forget about the Steelix and the Bastiodon. The hardest Pokemon to take down was Bronzor 100% because he just kept flinching me with extra sensory. He kept confusing me with Confuse Ray and he kept putting me to sleep with Hypnosis, which was like, this was so annoying. This was the most annoying Pokemon this entire run. Like, I'm not even joking. Bronzor, I hate you. I hate you. You're not invited to my sleepover. While I was browsing through my TMs, I managed to find the TM for return, which I learned to my big head for assurance. Since he could do some amazing damage if the friendship is high enough. So after another like 20 attempts, I managed to get the run that I needed. I confused the Bronzor with Swagger. He hits himself a few times and he we can set up a few more metal sounds. But then the tables have turned because we get hit with a Confuse Ray and we hit ourselves a few times, but eventually a few more hidden powers take out the Bronzor and now it's time for Steelix. I middle sound him twice and then hit him with two hidden powers as we get hit with a Dragon Breath which paralyzes me. After that the Steelix goes down and Bastiodon comes out. Even with a 4 times super effective special hidden power, Bastiodon barely takes any damage so I have to hit him with two metal sounds and then we can hit him with two more hidden powers to take him down after he heals up and hits us with a few Asian powers but we get ourselves the sixth gym badge and head on to the lake where we have to fight another commander but he was no problem like always since commanders are normally pretty weak and we take him down with Rampardos only. The next commander was Mars who also didn't oppose any kind of challenge because Pearl Ugly really isn't that good of a Pokemon now, is it? So while my ass was heading to Snowpoint City, I decided to teach my Bastiodon Metal Burst, which was the worst mistake of my life. Metal Burst is useless on Bastiodon. I, like, I just gotta get it out there. It's just useless. I then pushed my way through all the snow, and I finally got to the seventh gym led by Candice. She starts off with her Snowverse, so I start off with my Bastiodon. I hit it with an Asian power, but she survives and heals up. I then go for a metal sound and one more Asian power takes down the Snover. Next up is Medicham, so I switch into Rampardos, but we get hit with a Force Palm, which does a lot of damage, and then we miss all of our moves because of Protect, and she hail stalls me out of there, and Rampardos is down. So then I switch in Bastiodon, I hit it with a Hidden Power, and he actually survives, but the hail takes him out. Next up is Abomasnow, who doesn't form any kind of threat, and we take him down with two Ancient Powers, and last up is Sneasel. But Sneasel doesn't have any moves to touch us, so two Hidden Powers, and we get ourselves the seventh gym badge. One more to go, but before that we have to do some story. So we cleared the entire Team Galactic hideout to fight Cyrus over there and he is nothing compared with the Cyrus from Platinum. So my Bastiodon, not Rampardos, actually managed to sweep through his entire team with Asian power because Murkrow is weak to it, Golbat is weak to it, and Sneasel is weak to it as well. Very balanced team right there, Cyrus, very nice. If Cyrus was a breeze then the admin in the basement should be a problem either and as you might think he wasn't at all. So after setting free Yuxi, Azelf and Mesprit we head to the top of Mount Coronet where we have to find the big boy Dialga. But first and foremost we have to defeat the three admins first. Cyrus, Mars and Jupiter. So the commander's names are named after planets but what does Cyrus mean? Can anybody tell me? Comment down below. The double battle with my rival and the two commanders went pretty smoothly we didn't lose any Pokemon and we didn't get in any danger. So Dialga does some more shenanigans, the three late guardians come and they stop him by just doing some magic kind of stuff and we fight Cyrus. His first Pokemon Hunchcrow goes down with one single head smash and Gyarados is up next who also goes down with a single head smash. Next up is Weavile so I switch into Bastiodon and hit it with a hidden power. It barely does any damage so I hit it with a metal sound and one more hidden power manages to take it out. Last up is Crobat, so I switch into Rampardos, but we miss our head smash, so we go down to two air slashes. So I switch in Bastiodon, I hit it with a metal sound, but first we have to miss one, of course. We get hit with a Confuse Ray, we don't hit ourselves, we hit it with an Ancient Power, we get the boost, he heals up, and because of the boosts, we now one shot the Crobat. With Team Galactic stopped, we face Dialga, and we throw a Master Ball at his head, and we name him PP. Haha, PP. Time to have one last 
last final electrifying gym battle with the final gym leader. He starts off with Raichu and I start off with Rampardos. I hit it with a return and he actually one shots it. Next up is Octillery so I switch into Bastiodon. So apparently Octillery didn't know any water type moves so Bastiodon was a great switch in. We hit him with two metal sounds, we hit him with an ancient power, he then heals up because we did so much damage we get hit with another charge beam but one last ancient power and a hidden power take him down. Ambipom is up next so I decide to stay in, hit it with two metal sounds but then he baton passes because he had set up two nasty plots so he goes into Luxray which takes out our Bastiodon pretty easily so I switch in Rampardos. We get hit with a big charge beam but we manage to hang on and two returns take out the Luxray. Last up is Ambipom and return doesn't one shot so we have to hit him with two but he heals up so two more returns and we have our final gym badge. Speaking of our final now it's for time for our final rival fight with E. This rival fight was actually pretty hard I had to try a few times but eventually when everything lined up we did get the win. His first Pokemon Staraptor went down to two ancient powers of my Bastiodon. Heracross was out next so I switch into Big Head and hit it with a Zen Headbutt to take him out. And Polion was another beast but I hit it with a Head Smash. It does amazing damage. We do get hit with an Aerial Ace if you would have hit me with a water type move we would have been dead but another return and Empoleon is out of here. Rose Raid is next so I hit it with a Zen Headbutt and he goes down. Next up is Snorlax but I miss my move so we almost go down and I decide to just ram into it with Head Smash and sacrifice Rampardos to take out Snorlax in one hit. Rapidash's last switch manages to hit us with a Fire Blast which does a lot of damage but two Ancient Powers finishes it off and we get ourselves the final win against our rival E. Now it's time to fight our first Elite Four member AA Ram. His first Pokemon is a Dustox and I go for an Ancient Power as he sets up a Double T. He then sets up a Light Scream and I manage to hit him with a Metal Sound so two more Ancient Powers take out the Dustox. Next out is Heracross so I switch into Rampardos to hit it with a Zen Headbutt and take it out. Beautifly gets one shot with a Return. Vespiquen gets one shot with a Head Smash. We manage to hit Drapion with a Screech and a Return before we get taken out so we have to switch in Bastiodon who finishes the job. Now for the hardest fight of the entire run. This was the fight where I was the most afraid of. Bertha with her ground type Pokemon. And oh boy was I right. I had to over level so hard for this fight. I kept on trying. I even teached my Rampardo Stone Edge which I got together with the TM for Double Team which I will use later on. And while I was getting myself the TM for Double Team I also got myself the TM for Earthquake which we will keep for the end of this run as well. Since Bastiodon is rather useless from this point on, I'm only going to be grinding up from Pardos. So after about two hours of attempts, I was thinking by myself, I mean, this has to be possible because I got to her last Pokemon a few times already. So after another about 10 minutes of attempts, maybe I did it. Quaxire can take me down with one dig, so we have to hope that he doesn't use it. And this run, he didn't do it, so two returns take him down after she heals him up. Wish Cash manages to hit us with one big aqua tail but two returns finish him off. Then we manage to crit Hippo down and he is so stupid to go for Stone Edge which we survive and then one more Earthquake takes him down. Her last two Pokemon are Golem and Sudowoodo who both get one shot by an Earthquake. So with two Elite Four members defeated it's time for our third one which is Flint. His first Pokemon is Rapidash who bounces up which wastes an Earthquake of mine so she comes down and we take him down with one Earthquake. Infernape goes down to one Zen Headbutt. Lopunny goes down to a combination of Return and Zen Headbutt after he heals her up. Next up is Steelix, so I switch him Bastiodon to hit him with a Screech three times actually, and then hit him power him three times after he heals him up to take him down. Drifthem is last, so I hit him with two Ancient Powers, I then miss an Ancient Power, so I Metal Sound, and one last Ancient Power takes him down because of the Metal Sound special defense drop. Three Elite Four members down, only one more to go, which is Luke the psychic type user. His first Pokemon is a Mr. Mime who we take out with a single return. I know that Medicham can do a lot of damage and will probably survive a return so I go for Zen Headbutt to try and get the flinch and I get it so two Zen Headbutts take Medicham down. 
Next up is Bronzong and I know that we have Mold Breaker so Levitate won't help him so hit it with an Earthquake and he goes down as well. Alakazam has very bad defenses so he misses his Focus Blast and our return one shots him. And last up is Girafferig who we take down with one single Stone Edge. On to the big bad Cynthia and I know that Bertha was probably the hardest fight ever but Cynthia was definitely the second hardest of this entire run. Most of her team went down in one shot of my Rampardos but there is a big but only Lucario and Garchomp wouldn't go down sometimes and they would outspeed me which caused my Rampardos to go down in one hit because they knew super effective moves. So I was just sitting there attempting and attempting and attempting until I just thought that it wasn't possible so I remembered that I got the TM for Sword Dance at the game corner a little earlier in my run. Just for a situation like this so I learned my Rampardos Sword Dance and I went in again. But still with a Sword Dance up or two Sword Dances up it wasn't possible because I couldn't outspeed Lucario or Garchomp and they would always one shot me. So there was only one strategy left except for over leveling and that was the double team strategy which I actually applied right here because I picked up double team earlier in the run as well while I was picking up Earthquake. So then I had to set up four double teams on Spirit Tomb and two Swords Dances to be able to take down her whole team. So I had to do this on her Spirit Tomb so after setting up actually five double teams and two swords dances the slaughter was about to start we one shot her spirit tomb gastrodon lucario Milotic, Garchomp, and Roserade all with one single Earthquake because they couldn't hit me because of the double team strategy and that's how you use double team cheese guys. So that's the challenge complete but how did we do? I think it went kind of similar to my Pokemon Ruby's fossil run where one of my Pokemon was really over leveled and the other one didn't do as much which was their Armaldo and here it was Bastiodon which really didn't do that much at the end but Bastiodon did carry us through the beginning and kind of bits at the end as well which was great but who is the best one and i would like definitely say it's rampardos like bastiodon doesn't even come close to the attacking power that rampardos has even though that he is a wall so i just want to thank you guys for watching and as always people don't forget to leave a like subscribe and share this video with your friends i'm zwigo and i'll see you guys next time